Alberta health care overhaul plan inspires, at best, qualified optimism. Lauren, great to see you again. I, um, I've known Danielle Smith. In fact, I call her Danielle because I've known her since we were in college together. Yep. I've known Premier Smith, let me be more respectful, for really 30 years. Um, does she have the ability to take her libertarian Fraser Institute free market ideas that I know she has in her heart and implement them in real life against nurses unions and hospital bureaucracies that hate her and hate reform? Well, I don't see any evidence of that in the announcement that was made last week about uh, a, a shakeup at Alberta Health Services. Uh, as far as I can see, all they have done is changed the boxes on the org chart and some of the lines that connect the boxes, but they have left the same bureaucrats in the same positions, doing the same jobs, just with different titles of the organizations for which they do it for. Hmm. And so I, I, I remain a skeptic. This is a two-year process. There was too much of an announcement made at the beginning and not enough waiting to the end. They should have waited till they'd had consultations with nurses and doctors and, and with people in the regions of the province uh, to determine what it was that needed to be shaken up. But they came out last week with this brand new org chart that has four boxes where there used to be one box. And they're so proud of the fact that hmm. there are four boxes now and not one box, and that's going to switch it all over. But if you look closely at the new org chart, on, instead of an overarching box called the Alberta Health Services that was looking out for everything in the province, hospitals, extended care, uh, home care, all of the different types of, of, of health treatments that were available, medical testing, et cetera, et cetera. Now there are four boxes, but there's an underarching bureaucracy that's supposed to ins ensure consistency among the four new boxes. So Jeez. really, it, 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 to me, it, I'm, I'm unimpressed by it. I really am. You know, it's so hard to manage such a big thing. It, it really is a centrally planned economy. Healthcare is uh, the, the largest sure. program expense. It's a double digit share of the economy. Of course, it is brutally difficult to manage it. It reminds me of a short essay written by a French economist and philosopher called Frederick Bastiat. And I haven't read it in a while, but it was basically he said, the city of Paris, how can people go to sleep at night without being terrified that there won't be bread the next morning? He says, how, could, how can all the bakeries know how much bread to order? How can all the restaurants, who's in charge of delivering it? How do we set the prices appropriately? What kinds of, like he just, he, he talks about an extremely complex system that works spontaneously because everyone in the system is looking out for themselves. Yeah. And they, in this yeah. restaurant, they know what the demand is like on Sundays. And this bakery knows they have to open early because well, of the holiday. And more importantly than that, there's there's an incentive for them to guess correctly. Right. If they guess wrong, they will lose profit, right. either because they'll end up with too much bread or too few customers because they run out of bread early. And so th that's the beauty of the price mechanism, is that you don't have to have it centrally planned. There doesn't have to be a bureaucrat judge. It reminds Reminds me of, of P.J. O'Rourke's assessment of why the Soviet Union fell. He said people got tired of waiting in line for size nine Bulgarian yeah. shoes. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people waiting in line for size nine Bulgarian shoes. The only reason the healthcare system in any province works and in Alberta as well are the people who are involved in it are able to surmount. Yeah. The, the incredible grind of the bureaucracy. And let me just close the loop on that Bastiat thing because because he basically two ideas emerged from that. One is spontaneous order, which is hard for us to understand. That was his point. Oh my God, you're going to bed. Aren't you worried? We're all going to starve. No, spontaneous order came. And then he had a flip side idea, planned chaos. Like imagine, yeah. and, and his point was there was no single person smart enough to run the bread of paper. Right. because you don't know all the information. You don't know, there's a million things to know. And and so I think of Danielle Smith, who's smart, and but no one is smart enough. You can't have enough boxes in the org chart. There is no 
it's thing correct. smart. I mean, would you nationalize the restaurants? That's even more important than than doctors because we have to eat every day. I, I would worry more going to bed at night if the restaurants were nationalized. Right. That I would wake up hungry. Right. Then I worry now when they're all private. And so, hey. can Danielle Smith bring some freedom? I mean, I've known her for thirty years. I know she believes in libertarianism. She was an intern at the Fraser Institute the year after I was, so I know she knows this stuff. She does. I think Inside there's a problem. Go ahead. Inside and out, she knows this stuff. Absolutely. I, I think the problem, Lauren, is that Alberta has such a big surplus these days, it's politically easier just to slosh a bunch of money around. I mean, I, I let me quote from your article, which this is the line that scared me the most in your column. The column's called Alberta Healthcare Overhaul Plan Inspires at Best Qualified Optimism. Uh, it's in the Edmonton Sun. Here's what scared me when you wrote this, Lauren. I am surprised but encouraged by the number of people and organizations, such as the Alberta Medical Association and Alberta Association of Nurses, who've expressed qualified support the U, uh, the UCP healthcare reforms. And I thought, you know, if the teachers' union is endorsing Danielle Smith, which I don't know if they would ever do, if the public said that is terrifying to me because that's not patience, that's people in the system saying we love you, Danielle Smith. You're not the terrifying free market monster that Rachel Notley warned us about, you're sloshing around billions of dollars. That scares me, what you wrote there. The other thing I said in that column is that this reminds me more of a list of New Year's resolutions. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I should lose a little weight, I should get in shape, I maybe cut down on drinking a little bit. And by about the 15th of January, well, we know where most of those end yeah. up. This says, for instance, we should have 24-7 access to urgent care everywhere in the province. Well, that's a lovely idea, but there is nothing in any of the documents they've put out so far that says, how are you going to get a doctor in Manning, Alberta, which is up north of Peace River, when you can't get one now? I mean, it's lovely to say you're going to have 24-7 care, but you need to have probably two doctors if you're going to have 24-7 care, and you don't want to wear out one of them with being on call yeah. every day, all day long. So, you know, where are the solutions for that? Where they, they said in their throne speech the week before this came out that they expect Alberta's population will double by 2050. It would be at 10 million people. will be bigger than, than BC. will be bigger than Quebec. The only province that would be bigger than Alberta would be Ontario. That's lovely. But are you going to build a lot of hospitals in the next 25 years? Are you going to double the admissions or triple the admissions at the medical schools and the nursing schools? There, there is nothing in any of this yeah. except these bureaucrats who are all working under AHS, the one big box. Yeah will now be doing the same jobs in this box yeah. and this box and this box yeah. and this box. I, I, I fail to understand what any of this will do. Now, th there is a lot of consultation coming up. If they sit down and they actually listen to frontline workers, they may get some suggestions that will be helpful. But it's the same bureaucrats who are running the consultations yeah. who've been running AHS and they have a vested interest yeah. in staying in power. <laughs>